You're listening to the Salty Sex Cast with Pamela and Mariah. Yeah, and what's puberty? The sex education you wish you had in high school. Maybe a diagram will help. Hello, welcome to the Salty Sex Cast, episode 71 with Mariah. And I'm on Zoom today recording from my home studio um, office. We'll call it that. And I have an a wonderful guest, been on our calendar for some time, sent us some goodies. So I love you even more because yeah, yeah, you know, it's all about the introduction. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So I have Christopher Lovestone with me and he is the author of conscious cock. Um, and just some messages that you all need to perk up, listen to take notes, Um, I would love for everyone to hear the messages that you have to share Christopher with us. Um, but tell our listeners who you are and maybe anything that they'd like to know about you. I'm just a a diamond in a rough or or crazy person. I I mean, I'm a one in a million, like I'm doing something that like has needed to be done for so long, but no one's ever done it. I wrote a book, which is the book that I wish somebody had given me when I was a kid or young man fresh out of my own in college, something like that. So I'm a sex educator and a couples counselor, and I, I deal with teaching communication tools and strategies, intimacy technologies, we could say, and uh, anat- sexual anatomy and, and physiology and sex technique. So you combine all those things and teach a guy how to understand women. I, I work with heterosexual couples, you know, and teach a guy how women work. And it's like the secret sauce, the keys to the castle, changes the rules of the game entirely. So um, I'm just trying to get this message out there to flip the rules of the relationship game so that people have a chance to win rather than just getting stuck in relationship exhaustion. And in the shift change of, you know, calling people out, the Me Too movement, all sorts of things, very, very needed. So very, very timely message of, toxic masculinity, how not to be a dick pretty much, (laughs) but Mm. also how to, to just connect with others. I mean, even if you're not a heterosexual male, there's messages in this book that I found that I was like, you know, that's just good and healthy for everyone to hear and read and, and know. So, um, you know, you know, This, what you just said, one of the things that you just said is so common in our culture. You want to call someone a jerk, you call them a dick, right? Totally. You want to call somebody, oh, they're just the worst person in the world. What do you do? You call them a dick. Mm -hmm. Now you want to call somebody weak, uncourageous, not brave. You call them a pussy. Oh, and both of these just make my skin crawl. And that's part of why I wrote the book called Conscious Cock. It's about flipping the script in the English language because all we have are derogatory words for our genitals, even though they're the source of life, which you could say that's sacred or that's holy. I mean, that's some people would say that's God. Now, some people aren't religious. That's fine too. But like, there's something precious and valuable about being able to bring life into the world. Our genitals are therefore precious and valuable, or you could say they're sacred, but our language derides them as negative thing. Oh, they're, you're the worst. You're a dick. So anyway, conscious cock is about flipping that and saying, no, 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 let's, let's give ourselves some terms in the English language that are terms of reverence, praise, appreciation. And that's the for first our genitals. couple pages. So let's pages. reclaim <laughs> cock as, as a positive word. Let's not just play out toxic patterns that we saw our parents do, or we saw on television and in movies, but let's bring consciousness to us. Let's wake up and exit those bad patterns, shift them and bring our beautiful sexuality to the table. So I'm trying to reclaim and make a positive phrase out of Mm -hmm. cock by saying like conscious cock. No. Yeah. Something that, you know, a woman who's a heterosexual woman probably really wants a guy who's able to be sexually empowered, but brings consciousness to it. And isn't just playing a pattern on repeat. So I just needed to say that. Yes. Call it out. I absolutely love it. And that was very first few pages of your book talking about that. And I'm like, yeah, I've heard of like Yoni and, and, and that Uh female empowerment and, and, you know, really, um, owning that word, um, for a vagina, but I hadn't heard the male equivalent of that. 
You'll have to remind me. I can hurry and try to. Most people haven't. It's so, not common. Um, it's not common terminology. So, so Sanskrit. Uh, people who live in India are familiar with Sanskrit. Like they live it and breathe it every day. Holy holidays all year long, you know. But uh, with the infusion of yoga and a little bit of tantra into, mm -hmm. let's say, North America, um, we've gotten some words from Sanskrit from India, and there they have more reverence for sexuality as something that is is to be appreciated as the source of life. Like it's sex is revered in religion in different ways. Um, so. Yoni is a, is a term for the vulva or the pussy in you know, female genitalia, but the word for male genitalia, there's a couple of them. There's lingam, L-I-N-G-H-A-M, roughly translated in English, lingam. And another one is occasionally used vajra, which is a little difficult for us to say in English, vajra, V-A-J-R-A. -A. And, and it all depends on the translation and what it means, but like, some translations will say it means shaft of light, but it also other people say, well, it's referring to the cock of our big God, Shiva, our main God, our main male God, the father of all life in the, in the universe. It's God's dick. <laughs> okay. like, and, but then the, the, you, they refer that to your own genitals too. Like, you know, so it's, 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 it's reverence. That's yeah. beautiful. It, instead of yeah. derogatory, it's revering. I mean, has anybody ever praised your genitals? and revered them as a thing of beauty, right? That's a, that's a precious gift if somebody will do that for you. And if, when it does happen, I'm like, why? Ew, why? <laughs> so much judgment. And yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, I've never thought of that before. <laughs> but, you know, just showing how um, not used to, not mainstream that is, you know, we're, we're hide it, pretend it's not there, it's ugly, whatever. Um, so yeah, just already owning the word, having it more of a reverence, have positive thing is what you're doing. Um, I would love to hear. So you started out, how do you get on the sex path? And well, I mean, you're a human being, but, um, oh my Lord. tell me, you know, kind of the, the origin story of Christopher. I, I was, I went through a huge reversal getting turned inside out. Like if you had told me in my, the younger years of my life, I'm 46 now that I was going to be a sex educator. I would have said, you're nuts. You know, you're just, you're, you're, you're not in touch with reality. I had so much sexual shame growing up. I, something like that was beyond the realm of anything I could embrace as even an idea. Um, I was just so, so repressed um, just the way I grew up. Um, but I read science fiction as a child and that like got me to think in innovative ways. It removed restrictions from my brain. Mm. Um, I, I could see that maybe things could be different. So like all the broken relationships that I saw around me, I was able to categorize them and say, well, maybe it doesn't have to be like that. Maybe I can figure out something different. So in my mind, I had this penchant, this desire, deep rooted desire to try to figure out a way in life to actually have a hot sexy, engaged, lifelong, long-term relationship, like a real successful thing, something totally intimate and yummy and balanced and healthy, which mm. I didn't see anywhere around me. So it's like, I had this desire for my own life to figure that out, to land that prize. Then I went forth into the world and I became a teacher. And I thought, oh, I don't want to teach in the school system. I'll, I'll become a doctor. Healing is better. And, and then as I was shadowing all the different health care professions, yeah. primary care, psychology, psychiatry, uh, social work, et cetera. I did a lot in mental health and reproductive health. Um, I, 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 <laughs> I said, I'm not going to become a medical doctor. I'm not going to do this. Like this system is all about profit everywhere. I saw the insurance companies profiting and the, the caregivers only getting a limited amount of time in, to spend with their patients. And they had to go by the rule book. Mm -hmm. They had to prescribe by the rule book. And they couldn't do innovative things. They were trapped by the licensed profession in the state that they were operating in. And I was like, this whole system I disagree with. Anyway, so huge existential crisis for myself. What am I going to do with my life? I have something that's mine that I need to give. And as I allowed myself to <laughs> dive into that for a few years, <laughs> literally sailed away on a sailboat. 
<laughs> left everything behind wow. with my wife. We were in the rat race. We're like, screw this whole system is just destructive. It is it's dysfunctional. It's unhealthy. Let's get out of here. There's got to be something better for us. Mm-hmm. We literally bought a sailboat and sailed away. Didn't know how to sail. We figured it out along the way. Ended up sailing in the Caribbean. Amazing journey. Improvising. Literally where the winds were going to blow us at the mercy of the universe. But in touch with the present, you know, and getting in touch with our true motivations, desires, thoughts, feelings, fears, shame, all of it. So as I went through that process of sitting with myself, (laughs) It's like, man, I really need to talk about sex and relationships. Like I've got so much to offer there. So many strategies and tools and techniques that I've accumulated through 30 years of studying this stuff. So I just started writing my thesis on relationships as we were living our life, trying to build the life of our dreams. And eventually it came into become a curriculum and a course. I'm like, oh my God, this is fabulous. How do I get this out there to the most number of people possible? Let me repackage that as a book. And it just, it all came together. In wow. my, the, my experience teaching and course creating and, and curriculum development, um, my experience with learning styles and then advanced human anatomy and physiology, everything came together into this one <laughs> kind of like how to manual for guys about how to actually succeed in hot, sexy, long term relationship. A holistic how to manual, not just here's how to stick this and that. It's, it's yeah. think of this, don't forget to worry, you know. There's so many things in the balance with those heterosexual couples and really, you know, the, the difference is there. So it's about so many things going on to have full holistic relationship. Um, yes, physical, but emotional, mental. And I think you cover quite a bit in there and really just talking about, I'm even like, yes, you talk about my cycle and where I am. I'm like, oh yeah. It's one of the most important things. Yeah. I don't mean to talk over you, especially on a podcast, but like, it's one of the most important things that guys need to understand. If they're going to be in a long-term successful relationship with a woman, he has to understand menstruation. He Mm -hmm. has to also understand menopause. If he's going to succeed in going through that transition, he also has to understand that he's not always going to be the hot shit that he is today. He's not always going to be able to get it up in his life. He's going to go through a hormonal transition himself, like, you know, to embrace the reality of each other in an empowered way creates allies. And if you can make a relationship with your partner of allies, health allies, intimacy allies, like then the sky's the limit, man. You can create any beautiful thing of your dreams. I think I love that you use the word allies. I, that too is also empowering and talks about connection and, you know, not fixing either. Cause it's not, you know, I, I think some people are, are so worried, like, oh, it's broken. It's wrong. I already feel so much shame and wrong about sex. So when any time that we can have better positive language around those resources, um, it makes them easier and more applicable, um, wholeheartedly believe in that message for sure. So on this journey, of writing this book. I would love to just, you know, we can talk about this book the whole time, but everyone else just needs to buy it. Cause you know, <laughs> I don't want to just go through the book, but, um, what were some of those lessons that you were just like, how many of you needed this? Like, or just those light bulb moments that you're like, man, that hit me in the gut. I really know now I'm on my true calling, or this is a really needed service resource, whatever. Well, like the the most common question I get asked from guys is how do I last longer in bed? Okay. No, no, no. Let's say that's superficial, right? But let, we, we could say that that's superficial, but if we allow ourselves to just sit with it for a moment and like look a layer or two deeper, what's underneath that, what's his motivation for that is actually a beautiful thing. Yeah. He wants to please his partner more. He wants to spend more time doing this beautiful activity with his partner. Those are good things. Those are positive things. Right. And it's a really difficult thing for a guy to say he's not, it's not, he's not lasting as long as he wants to last. So, you know, there's lots of answers to that question. How do I last longer? Better? And a lot of it has is sex technique. And I can, you know, tell the guys that that's what they come to me. That's what they want to know. They want to know how do I make a come a million times and last as long as I want. And I'm like, well, you're not a robot and neither is she. Like, you're not machines. Like, you're real human beings. So, yeah. like, the answer to that question is what drove the whole creation of the book. Like if I want, if you, you want to learn this much, but you got to learn this thing first. And then there's this other thing you need to know before that. And this other thing before that, once you, it just kind of worked backwards 
first we got to start with our mindset, our beliefs. If we think that penis is, or it's, either, it's either clinical or derogatory, it's either dick or penis, there's no room for it being a beautiful thing that can actually be worshipped by your partner, right? If pussy is just a, 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 a synonym for weak, cowardly, and chicken-like, or you're a chicken, like then how can you actually sit there and worship at the altar of your beloved's yoni? You know, it's free frame. Anyway, so, so there's so much to go into to creating a roadmap for guys to get to that place where they want to go. It's not just about lasting longer. No, it's about intimacy. It's about really, truly connecting. And then it doesn't matter how long you last. If you come in a minute, it's yummy. And if you last for 10 hours, it's yummy. And you have the whole spectrum available to you rather than just a little bit like a pattern in your sexuality. You're just doing the same and it gets old. It's always the same. Oh, it's always missionary. It only lasts five minutes and we're done. And he rolls over and goes to sleep. No, you don't want that. You want the full spectrum of sexuality available to you. So you can be high. You can be down low. Like you can be happy. You can be sad. You can be energized. You can be tired. And like everything can still be on the table and available. So there's so much that, that goes into this. There's so many aha moments. Um, but really understanding each other and being able to communicate what's going on inside of you in a way that doesn't necessarily drive the other person away, right? Has a higher chance, higher likelihood of going well than just blurting it out or not saying it at all, right? The things that we just have seen everybody around us do our whole lives. So um, I don't know, maybe help me focus a little bit more. Where do we go from here? When you wrote it or, or created this, the services that you create, I, obviously you do this because you saw a hole in your own, um, need, Hey, this is a need for myself. Um, but who is your audience that maybe even has surprised you? So, I mean, your typical audience is, you know what you, but what's some feedback you've been getting that you're like, wow, I, and you know, really validated your work that you've been doing. Oh my God. I just got That's uh, a loaded question. A couple <laughs> <laughs> feedbacks that took my breath away and just made me pause for a moment because they were so awesome. Um, one was from a guy who just came down from like the most amazing sexual experience in his life. He's like, Oh my God, I got to write you <laughs> like your book <laughs> made the most amazing thing happen for me in my entire life. And he actually had a threesome with two women, his partner and his partners. I don't know. One of her friends. And he went from previously to reading my book, that premature ejaculation, not lasting as long as he wanted to in bed not really empowered, not really strong and empowered and like, you know, to after reading the book and having the tools that I present in the book, that even the practices that I present in the book to being such a rock star, or I could say cock star that he pleased oh, both that. of these women <laughs> till they were tired. Good luck with that. When a goddess is alive, like when she's <laughs> sexually empowered and in her sexual body and full power, good luck tiring her out which is a lot of the dy dynamics between men and women sometimes is that if she really lets herself get turned on, he can't last long enough. Mm -hmm. Right. So she doesn't let herself really get turned on in the first place, but he did. A, he fucked both of them so much, so well, <laughs> so passionately that they were calling him a sex God. Oh, and he tired them both out, made them not you know, wobbly in the knees and like was still going and he could have gone is longer. The true sign. The wobbly in the knees. Yes. That's always the, the, okay. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so he's like, oh my God, thank you for giving me an easy how-to manual to actually wow. be able to wield that power because sure you could learn the sex techniques, but if you don't have the mm -hmm. presence to really connect with your partner and her, in her mind, in her heart and in her sex all simultaneously, like the presence to handle that, to give her the safety to really open to you and feel like you're not going to drop her. What am I saying with this? Like, if you, if you can't do that, then you can't really uh, ethically wield the power of these amazing sex techniques. That's but when you understand how to connect with her mind, connect with her heart, and then her sex opens to you, the availability of sexual play with you, like, 
then you really deserve it. You've earned it then, right? And then you can go into it and you can sit in that as long as you want to sit in it. I mean, you can fuck in the most like beautiful paradise that you create with each other. You co-create for as long as you want. Like it becomes the most beautiful place for you guys to go to in your relationship. And you can go there anytime you want. And the healing power of that on the hurts, the, the traumas that you've experienced in life, mm. right? The, the, the horrible situations and things that you've gone through and lived through, the, the healing power of that on your heart, on your past, your history is so profound. Truly. So this is powerful stuff. When you combine it all, it, like it really creates this roadmap for, forward through these kind of treacherous waters of sex and intimacy. And what do I do? I don't know how, like, ah, she's changing her emotions. I don't know how to like meet her today. Like she's throwing me off balance. Like, ah, I'm going nuts here. There is a roadmap. And did you put a disclaimer in your book for that? that may be called sex God after reading this book. <laughs> I should right? in the second, <laughs> in the third edition, that'll be coming out soon. I'll okay, put that in there. Perfect, a little, a little yes. funny, funny disclaimer. Um, no, I just say <laughs> I'm Mariah, not a medical, sex <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. This yes. is not medical advice, right? Mm -hmm. That's, that's all I say. Like I, I turned away from a life in medicine. I said, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. It has to cross all these different. Yeah. That, that life of medicine is sanitized, unfortunately. And you still have disease. Um, so you need to be holistic to really cure it. And I think it, you really have covered a lot of that, um, a lot of ground too, in all those areas. So you had the one, um, he wrote you right after was really excited called that. Um, any other experiences oh, that sure. just really from this book that, or, mm -hmm. or your services in general, um, even for yourself. Well, this other one that came to mind is this guy who wrote me that he was in a relationship, a new relationship, like a year old mm -hmm. um, with, with his partner, and that she'd been sexually abused in her past. So he was navigating a minefield in multiple different ways. One, it's a relatively new relationship. It's not like they've been together for 20 years, know, know everything that the other person is thinking, stuff like that, like only a year. They're still getting to know each other. Right. So that's, that's part of the mystery right there. But then another part of the mystery for him was like, I don't know how to navigate the trauma that she's got still stored in her body from being abused by a man in her past. Like he didn't know what the hell to do. How do you navigate that? Like people don't give you the roadmap. There's no GPS to like get you through that. Like you are in the dark, mm -hmm. you got your wits and whatever skills and technologies you can learn. So he, he was reading my book and um, they were making love one day and it triggered her and she mm. shut down walls came up PTSD flashbacks. I mean, full on. And he's like, what do I do? What do I do here? He came back for the next day and he used some of the techniques that I put in the book in the communication section to open a conversation with her with a higher likelihood of it going well than without using these conversation technologies by positioning himself in such a way that she experienced him as safe rather than threatening as an ally rather than an adversary. And then she was able to open up to him and they were able to co-create a path forward where he could help her and they could still be intimate with each other rather than shutting down, needing to leave because he touched her so deeply, emotionally and physically so deeply that it triggered her. Like that's scary to be touched so deeply sometimes. Uh, not right? And not prepared for it too. I yeah, you might that, not be ready. Yeah, that's a, yeah, a lot just, of folks yeah. are fearful of that. And so it's easier to, to do my routine. Is yeah. there five minute nightly, every other night, whatever? Because um, if we get any deeper... That's unnavigated, uncharted territory. Charted. There be demons there. Yeah. <laughs> Dragons. <laughs> but you did chart quite a bit yes. for folks in there. Um, so writing this with the heterosexual male in mind. Yeah. Anyone who's read it, who's maybe surprised you, you know, if it has been a female or um, anyone that's like, yeah, that is totally true. What you wrote, or uh, 
I could suggest some edits. Any any feedback that you've gotten that's maybe been surprising too that way? Well, let me think about that for a moment, how to approach, you know, tons of women read the book and they're like, oh my God, there's so much good stuff in here. And it really doesn't matter what your gender is or your sexual orientation. But when I was thinking of how do I craft, how do I mold all the tools, technologies, tips, techniques that I have in my toolkit Mm -hmm. into a product to give people or a course, or a book? How do I mold all that together and shape it? Who am I going to focus that for? Because it's, it's good to be focused. Oh yeah, you need to It helps you to audience. land mm-hmm. on target, you know? So as I was thinking about that, I'm like, who needs the most help? <laughs> and it was a hashtag me too. Yeah. Guys were getting outed left and right for years of being sexual predators, abusers, inflicting trauma, harassment, like long lists. Like the world began to, for the first time, understand a glimpse of the scope of female abuse by men. So who needs to be helped the most right now? I don't know. I was sitting with that. I'm like, honestly, it's guys. Yeah. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Maybe they've hurt someone in the past. Maybe they haven't. Maybe they've been angels, whoever, it doesn't matter. But between a rock and a hard place, they don't want to be part of the problem but they don't know how to to embody their sexual power without being labeled a predator, a chauvinist, a dick, Mm -hmm. et cetera. Right. But they, they they genuinely want to help. They genuinely, they're genuine in their hearts. Yeah. I think that the majority of guys are genuine in their desire Mm -hmm. to be a good person, a good partner, a good lover. I believe that Yeah, they might not have the tools and techniques, and they might've been indoctrinated into patterns that they don't even know that they're playing out, but I think in their hearts, they want to be good. So, so I said, oh, you know, I don't see anybody helping these guys. I just see everybody calling them out, which needs to happen. But then but what do we do about that? What are the That's resources that we're, we're giving to, to guys that aren't really mm-hmm. part of the problem who want to be part of the solution? Where are the resources for them? All mm-hmm. these women going through personal empowerment work these days, the goddess community. And they're saying, where are all the empowered men? And I'm like, well, feminism has been like labeling them as part patriarchy. Like you're part of the problem for 50 years now. And a lot of these guys are just like, they're, they're just diminished and they're not empowered. They're in a system where men are empowered, but they're personally terrified and fearful of doing the wrong thing. So let's give them a hand. (laughs) Please and some let's direction. help save the world by helping people have successful relationships with a partner. Fewer broken homes. How many kids are out there that have gone through bro- their home being broken? Like the losing their mother or their father, the horrendous fallout of a four year costly divorce where everyone's bitter and beaten by the end. You know, like let's help that. Mm-hmm by giving guys tools to be part of the solution when the problem, the scope of the problem is becoming apparent. Like they they need to, they need a hand. Yeah. I, I absolutely love that because you know, the me too movement is beautiful and wonderful and we needed it. But then what? I think so much energy was out there to just say, here's the problem. Not enough energy was now this is what the solution, or this is how we get closer to a solution. And so I think that was always my biggest complaint. And I'm actually, you know, we just recently had an episode about cancer cancel culture for the same reason. We can't just cancel and just say, Hey, you know, we didn't like it, or this wasn't appropriate. This wasn't okay to say, so you're gone, but why, what do we do about it? How do you know, where's the other side to that? So I love that. That's a resource. We have it. And not just a book, you have a community. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you have a, um, a community for support. Is it uh, like a online yeah. community? Tell, tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about that and what goes on in your community. Right now, it's just a Facebook group. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've been running men's circles, men's groups for years. You know, I spent a lot of time uh, with other guys creating a space where we could open up, but it's not locker room talk. Yes. Where we can talk about the hard stuff. And not just tell each other what we should do, you know, oh, what you should do is blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. Let's change how that's done so we can facilitate us bringing up things that otherwise we'd be too afraid to bring up, like maybe a problem with my wife, 
you know, that I don't know how to deal with or a success that I had with my wife that I'm really proud of. Yeah. Maybe that's in the bedroom, oh gosh, you know, like, more but not locker room culture where it's this kind of trashy dicky thing, mm-hmm. you know? Anyway, so I've spent a lot of time in that and there's ways as a facilitator to craft a space that facilitates teasing out these mm-hmm. really rich nuggets. And it might be that in a circle or a group, you might share something that you might never have shared ever before in your life. And you may never have another opportunity to share ever else in your life. It might be the only time that that ever happens for you. So it is extremely powerful and valuable if it's a well-facilitated group. Um, So, so I've done a lot of those. Then COVID hit and I was like, ah, I'm going to stop doing these in person. And just, I have my little Facebook group online. So it's, it's a safe place where guys can talk about sex. But not in a derogatory, jerky kind of manner. You know, we could talk about like literally a sex technique or an issue that we're having in our relationship because a lot of guys, men's circles and men's work is about issues that you have with your mother or issues you have with your father. And I don't really go into mother and father issues Mm -hmm. and I don't go into our inner child work. I go into our current relationship or Mm -hmm. desire to be in a relationship Mm -hmm. or current sex life. You know, let's talk about that. Let's get in there because the nitty gritty of our confidence, our view of ourselves is so affected by our experience of sex. Do I feel good about myself? Do I feel bad about myself? Do I feel like I'm awesome or do I feel like, oh shit, I'm a jerk. Like, you know, there's so much there. It's really rich, fertile territory. In most places, you can't mine that. You can't get those nuggets out of the ground in most circles, most therapeutic environments. And, and, you know, and... Yes. I was, I stopped myself from going on a tangent, (laughs) (laughs) um, you know, more of just, you know, the, the therapeutic side of that and, and therapy where that is healing of past events and, you know, the whole mother, father, trauma, child thing. Um, there's definitely a time and place for it, but you're Mm -hmm. saying your group is this, what's the here and now let's grow here. Let's be supportive for each other. Um, there's things that we can get in a supportive community. Um, oh, yeah, I share is, articles about yeah. masculinity. I share articles about sex, about the problems that men are facing or the ways that they're being categorized or the solutions that I see or articles that, that explain uh, a common pattern that guys find themselves in mm-hmm. that we never asked to be put in, but we inherited that and that got put on our shoulders. Maybe we didn't ever identify it in succinct words in the English language before. Maybe it's like, oh, I didn't really ever look at it that way before. You know, so I, I just I post content, you know, and then we so feel discussion awareness, there. having a safe place to have those discussions without, yeah. you know, judgment, persecution. Um, because I think that is the fear of bringing up sex around with men. You're going to be persecuted, uh, persecuted and saying, you know, oh, you're oh, gross God. and dirty and horny. And that's all you ever think about. But really, it's like, I really just have never had that safe place to have a conversation, a healthy conversation about it. You know, most guys, I would, I would say that when a friend tells them something really deep about their intimate relationship with their partner, like, let's say you're my friend, guy friend, and I'm telling you something about my sex life or, Oh, I got this thing that's happening with my cock. Like it's a little weird. I never happened to me before. I don't know. Like Bro, oh, I don't want to hear about Most, it. You, you probably don't know how the hell they handle that. Yeah. Right. Like, Because it's not a common conversation. We don't do these things every day. No. It's not normal. And I'm going to put that in air quotes, meaning it's not something that, that is common. It's now, not getting a coffee in the morning is common. Mm-hmm. Coffee and, and a conversation, that's common. But, but talking about our deep personal intimacy issues in our lives, successes or failures or, or, or our plumbing, even like guys don't talk about their penises. They just don't do it. <laughs> you know, women might compliment them each other in a sisterly manner, like oh, even in, in the, the locker bathroom. room. Oh, you've got nice are, breasts. I love yes, your boobs. You know, but yes. guys, they would never say, "Oh, nice cock." <laughs> like, oh no, oh, you're you're gay, yeah. right? Like, yeah, you're so or, much homophobia. Or that's a threatening thing, and I've got to defend myself. And very unhealthy interaction. We just can't. It, you know, it's I never not normal. Of that for yeah, as, we, as yeah, even like, oh, you're circumcised. Uh, look, or you're uncircumcised. Interesting. You know, was that your parents' decision? Did you decide that yourself? Like, would, do, have you ever imagined possibly even hearing that conversation between two men? No, yeah. guys would never do that. 
And uh, but there's so know, much there. Looking at it, my own limited view, I do know there's so many support groups for women and, and being empowered and boosting each other up and feminism, right? You know, just like all these things, but um, never saw the 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 massive blind spot we have for healthy, supportive places, um, referrals, anything, so, uh, materials for, for men, at least right now, where we're at right now. I mean, hopefully with these conversations, each, mm-hmm. each episode, <laughs> mm-hmm. each, um, person reads that book and we're right. getting closer. So you're making this conversation more normal. You're helping people to take it more lightly and you're modeling for them that, oh, wow, if she can talk about sex like that, maybe I could talk about sex like that. Oh, and maybe finding some courage yeah. and maybe finding a safe space that they might be able to bring something up in there. You know, so I just want to de- you know, declare that there's a big difference between sex therapy and what yes. I do. Yes. Right. I am not a therapist. And if there is an issue that is, is something that needs to be diagnosed and treated, like you need to go to a therapist for that. Mm-hmm. You really do. You know, but if we're just talking um, tools, techniques, approaches, mindset, uh, and solid information about how to be in a relationship, <laughs> you don't need to go to a therapist for that. You can just get the information, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, as a health coach. I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, there is a place where therapy and coaching intersect and, and it's a very healthy place. It's great. Um, but I'm definitely, you know, if there's a, um, there's time and a place to refer you to a, a different type of specialist, mm-hmm. I'm this kind of specialist. You get to go to that. You know, you're not going to see a foot doctor when you have something wrong with your eyes. So different things, but, Yeah, totally right. Yeah, different things but, for the holistic pr- picture. Yeah. I love that you're using the word holistic when we integrate all these different aspects of ourselves, we become whole, Mm -hmm. right? Otherwise we're not whole. There's something missing, right? You can't achieve mastery if if, if you're incomplete. You also can't achieve mastery if you've got crappy old dull tools, (laughs) grandpa's, you know, um, knife that hasn't been sharpened in 50 years isn't going to good cut a, cut a pr- fine, precise cut, right? Like if you want to do razor sharp cut, you got to have a fine tool. You want to build a masterpiece. You have to have fine tools, right? Mm-hmm. So we, we give tools yeah. to help people achieve oh. better creations. Yeah. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm like my thoughts going and I want to also absorb at the same time. Do. Um, how often do anyone even, uh, does anyone even sit down and take an inventory of their toolbox, let alone work to sharpen those tools and add, add to them. Like, uh-huh. This conversation is let's take that inventory. Where are you at? Uh-huh. Let's, you know, if, um, anything's missing, anything's connecting with you. And you're just like, you know, I've never thought of that. Hey, I think Christopher has a re- resource for you today. <laughs> um, that's fun. That's yeah, fun. I think that's really cool just to have that conversation and safe and, um, so with this Facebook group and the, and the communities that you have, you know, so you say you, you post resources, it's a mm-hmm. safe place to post questions and, and yeah. also, you know, wins and just kind of, you know, positive things that are going on. Not everyone always has complaints. We also have some great things we want to celebrate too. And to have a place for that, that's really neat. Um, you know, what it's else also great to offer? just lurk. It's also great to just lurk there. It's perfectly oh, yeah. fine to just observe. Oh, I want to, but I can't, you yeah. know, not that I can't, but I want it to remain safe. And I think if, you know, I was there as a fly in the wall, uh, that wouldn't, that would not have the opportunity, you know, disser- it would be a disservice. No, I, I uh, kicked but, yeah. um, <laughs> uterus owners out and just kept people Oh, I don't penises. have one. Oh, I totally okay, get it. I just okay, kidding. Yoni holders. Or, <laughs> uh, not go. holders. That could go the other way. Uh, yoni owners. There we go. Yoni um, owners. I no, love so it. no, because we deal with, you know, you got, if you have testicles, if you have testosterone, you have a penis, are mm-hmm. you circumcised or not? You know, like, like it's. Oh, it's, yeah. No, no, no. I would never want to take away from it, but I am so curious because now this is something I've never really got to be a part of. I didn't, mm-hmm. you know, and so my curiosity. And how can we as, Yoni owners support those who want to create more of a conscious cock. How can we support you guys? 
Well, it's very tricky to give someone a self-help book because it can trigger a knee-jerk reaction in them that makes everything go bad. It just goes sour. They they feel judged. Oh, yeah. Right? And then they back up. And so it's really good to be very careful, you know, so giving like for, for, for women who are in relationship with a man, like it's a very good idea to give my book in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, to be very careful that you don't trigger a reaction that is unwanted mm-hmm. or that's going to hinder progress towards your true intent. And I'm going to assume that your true intent is that you want to improve your relationship. You want more yum in your relationship and you want that for both of you. You know, I'm going to say like most of us, I think want that. Um, so how do you, how do you navigate that? they like, so there, I, I, I recommend saying, Hey, I heard about this awesome book. That's got some fun exercises in it Ooh. to help us have um, more yummy sexual experiences with each other. So my girlfriend was telling me about it. It's got this exercise in the back. I really want to do it with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you would you be open to checking it out with me? And if he's like, no, or ignores you, well, okay, you can just be reading it yourself. That's fine. Mm-hmm. You know, leave it by the toilet and inevitably he'll probably pick it up while he's sitting there, you know, for 15 Little minutes doing this thing, yeah, yeah. you know, um, but, but just not pushing it on or making him feel like he wants to, cause guys, we, 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 a lot of guys, we have kind of like this self image that we've got it all figured out. Mm-hmm. I don't need to ask for directions. No, I, I get all, I, I'm fine. So if you trigger that kind of knee jerk reflex, it, it doesn't help you get where you want to go. No, that's but, all I'm saying. But mm-hmm. if you're like, honey, I, I want to, I want to like try some new sexual things with you, mm-hmm. or I want to have some, some more yummy experiences with you, or, you know, you know, your relationship and you know, your partner. Um, I'm just speaking in generalizations, but if you, if you bring it to the table, you know, I've got a worksheet, free worksheet in the download section of my website. Just go to consciouscock.com. There's tons of free downloads there. And um, it's how to bring up the hard stuff. Mm, so, it. you know, I would recommend reading that worksheet or reading that and doing the worksheet about how you can bring it up to your partner so that it doesn't, so you have the highest chances of, highest chances of it going well. Um, there's other things that might be difficult to bring up also in your life. Maybe you did something that you're not proud of <laughs> or something that, that hurt your partner, but you never told them you mm-hmm. want to clear the air. It yeah. could be something like that. Or it could be like, I really want to try anal sex or I really want to have a threesome or I really want you to tie me up. And you just feel so much shame or judgment about that or, or fear of the other person's reaction yeah. that you, mm-hmm. you're afraid to bring it up. So this kind of, strategy of how to bring up things really helps a lot of different things in your relationship. So that's both in the book and it's a free download on, the, on my website. So if you, do, if you bring it up in the right way, then, then you create a chance for really being partners and going in a new direction and having some more fun experiences in your life that are, are, are things that you both actually want to do rather than just one of you and the other one going along, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, having those here's a way for some of our, our, um, lady listeners out there to kind of support that, or maybe, um, what about they already have the book and maybe, um, there's some changes with their partner that they weren't expecting. Have you had any feedback like that from, um, your Yoni owners by any chance? Like, I'm not sure how to handle these changes. They're good, but unexpected, or I want to still be just as good as you are. Uh, and, and this is a partnership, you know, I don't want just one person to be working on something. I want us both to be working on something. Do you have mm. any suggestions for that's those? interesting? You know, that touches on a deep point, um, that I hear consistently from women in relationship with men that they put way more effort in than the man does to mm. their relationship, to their appearance to the house, so just lots more effort. And that inequity of effort can be a problem. There's often a problem in relationships. So I, I, I've heard that like this helps guys 
they see that it help, that that after reading this book, the guys are putting more effort in into their personal appearance. Maybe they're cutting their toenails more often, or maybe he got rid of that wart that was on his hand, you know, or maybe he got a new shirt, new underwear, you know, <laughs> honestly, because guys oh, often are wearing three year old underwear with holes. And guys, that's not sexy. It's oh, not sexy. Oh, yes. I it's not. It. I'm yeah. like, no, you know, I tear it. And now you get can't some wear it new. At all. Go like, buy some new ones. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but it also could be effort in the bedroom, Yeah. Okay. you know? So, so I, I hear this feedback that, that, that there, that, that it helps the guys are getting, are putting more effort in because the guys are more interested and they see a pathway forward to the light at the end of the tunnel. They actually see a way through the maze. So they're excited, authentically excited, oh, which is different that. than being forced. Good right. Call out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 This isn't a self-help book that someone left on my bedside table that I'm just going through the motions. Cause that's, what's going to please my partner. It's really, I already have this genuine drive to please my partner. And now I finally connected the dots to get there. Yeah. That's what's now, really cool. There's no guarantee of success. I also yeah. have heard from plenty of people that try these things that I'm teaching, that I'm demonstrating, just, they're, they're just, they just work for me in my life. This is just what I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I live at copy me if you like, try it on for size, but that it doesn't land with their partner. Like it, she's not opening, she's not changing. Like, so there's no guarantee that this is going to work. If, if she's shut down, if she's closed to you, if she's already rolling her eyes at you, when you t- must say things like, you know, there's no guarantee of success. And I also don't advocate that everybody should stay in the relationship that they're in just on general principles. Well said. Yeah. You know, like, I don't think being in a relationship is better than not being in a relationship, especially if you're getting gaslit, if, if you're just being ignored, if you're being abused in any way, even just by, by just being shut out mm-hmm. emotionally, you yeah. know? So it, it can sh- shine a light on, is there something a, 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 disease, a problem in your relationship? Yeah. Is there, there's something deeper, much deeper, you know, cause you can be healthy. You can be working on yourself as, um, you know, the male in the relationship, but if something else is going on, that's already there, it's probably actually going to shine that light. Right. If there is something yeah. deeper, um, much deeper. Um, but this is a really good starting point and super easy to follow. It's not complicated. It wasn't a, you know, 3000 page owner's manual for like, oh my vehicle. God, no. <laughs> no, short and <laughs> but, sweet, you know, something yeah. that you can just like, okay, I want to learn about the clitoris or I want to know mm-hmm. about the cervix. How do I touch the cervix? If I'm giving her a hand job without or, having to Google it and get, you know, like overwhelmed. Yoni massage. Yeah. Right. Like just pick it up. You get a quick download and it's, you're going to get a lot of aha moments and, and, and useful tools. But I want to say on the topic of like, if you're going through any of these strategies in your relationship and you're seeing, wow, there's really a problem in our relationship. I didn't really see that before, but now I see it. It's okay. There's tools and techniques in the book about how to bring that up with your partner like, and talk about it. <laughs> like it not only helps you see the issues, but also helps you bring the issues up to talk about them. So like it, it really is the keys to the castle. It's really neat. I think it's so needed and well-written, well, easy to follow. Um, I, I love the sticker. I love everything you said. It's so much fun. I was like, yes. I, I mean, I'm definitely like a goodies, like and, and merch fan. Like, I'm just like, yes, freebies. I love it. Um, so I had fun. Uh, we have our guests sign our door to the studio. So your sticker is on the door. Oh, that's I'll great. take a picture and send How it fun. to you, Thank but it's you. super fun. Um, very much appreciate, you know, just this service and message that you're sending out there because all of those that are there are just, um, creating a healthier world out there. Um, we need to have these conversations more often, um, and share these resources and not be afraid to, to talk about them and be intimate and be open and authentic. So very much appreciate that you're out there. And you're not well, afraid. Mariah, I want to thank you for having me on the show, but I also want to thank everybody that's tuning into the show because we don't often prioritize absorbing new information and 
sharpening our tools in our toolkit for intimacy, communication, and sexuality. So thank you for showing up and doing something. Like even listening to a, you know a podcast, like good on you. Keep yeah, going. Yeah. Like the more you, <laughs> tools you get in your toolkit, the better craftsman you become. Right. Mm -hmm. So whether it's my book or something else, like, yes, <laughs> keep diving <laughs> in, keep exploring, right. Keep like believing in yourself and seeking ways to ever become more who you really authentically are inside of yourself, creating safe spaces for that to happen. Yeah. Will you please tell our listeners where they can find more information about you, about your book, about your services? Everything's at consciouscock.com. Sure is. <laughs> because I, I, was I get here censored perusing. on Facebook. I get censored on Instagram, <gasps> on YouTube, on Amazon. So like, go to my website. <laughs> like, you can follow me on social media if you want to, but I get blocked so regularly and I've literally gotten banned from Instagram. Um, so I just kind of, I just post what I'm going to call romance related stuff online, you know, but if you want the, the, the like intimacy and sexuality related things. Just go to my website. The Tons Tuesday. of free downloads there. Consciouscock.com. And you can buy my book there. You can get the audio book there if you just want to listen. Because often it's nice to just listen in your headphones and nobody sees that you've got a book, <laughs> right? You can do it in the privacy of your headphones. Oh, I'm just listening to music, honey. You know, And you can kind of keep it a secret. And that might you might need to keep it a secret in your life, or that might be useful for you. So anyway, the audio book's on my site too. Fantastic. Very much appreciate your time. Um, if anyone wants to ask questions, we can forward them along. You can send them to salty at gmail.com. We are on Facebook and Twitter. You can also, um, become part of our Patreon community at patreon.com forward slash salty sex cast. Don't try to search for us because we're adult content and we just talked about that. We're blocked all the time, um, but that's okay. Just don't cock block us and we'll, we won't judge you for it. And please leave us a review, share it with your friends. Um, again, we already talked about how important it is to have these conversations and maybe this is the safe way to even start a conversation with your partner or just get more opinions. Um, we're here for you. So thank you so much for listening in. We'll see you next week. Stay sexy and salty. Bye. Yeah. And what's puberty? Puberty? Well, puberty's a lot of things. Here's the piece. When you hear about it first, it sounds very strange. Oh, if it really bothers you, you should see a doctor. Then at puberty, certain glands begin to work and our bodies begin to change. It enlarges the penis itself. And there's a center opening between those two, which is called the vagina. The sex education you wish you had in high school. Maybe a diagram will help.